Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Brix BRX Do More PLC High Speed Input Timer. Now the high speed discrete inputs can be programmed to measure the amount of time between pulses. When you want a scaled value representing a speed or rate, the high speed input timer is a better option for pulse rates before, below 5 kHz. This is compared to using the high speed input pulse counting selection. Now the Brix Do More Series of programmable logic controllers have built-in high-speed inputs. These inputs can count in counter, timer, or catch pulse modes. Every CPU will have either 6 or 10 high-speed inputs, or HSI, available depending on the model. These inputs can be used for input frequencies from 0 to 250 uh, kilohertz. 250 kilohertz represents 250,000 input counts per second. That can be counted from devices connected to your PLC like an encoder. Due to the speed of the inputs, they function on the BRICS Do More PLC asynchronously with the PLC scan time. That means that it will operate independent of your PLC logic or ladder logic being scanned. We will continue looking at the high speed inputs on our BRICS Do More PLC by looking at the pulse timer mode. Previously, we looked at the high speed count mode for the PLC. We scaled the count to display RPM or revolutions per minute. Scaling the edge trigger timer from our incremental encoder, we will scale and compare the RPM from last time. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up my screen, you'll see that we have our um, incremental encoder. And we have the specifications over here. And la again, links will be provided in the, in the links below. And if we actually look at the wiring diagram of this, you will see that my uh, TDRA incremental encoder is an NPN open collector. That means that it's a syncing type output. Now, because it's a syncing, out syncing output type, that means my input to my do more DC input will be a sourcing. So that means my common sits at plus 24 volt DC. So I have that. And then in my black, my output A or phase A is at zero. Phase B is at one and phase Z, which is at two. And phase A and B are my pulses, which gives me in this particular case, 1024 pulses per revolution. So that is my wiring of my PLC. Next, what we'll do is take a look at our actual hardware that we have here. And if we look at the hardware, here we have our Brix Do More PLC, and we have our encoder connected to it. And there is my connections like we did before, just discussed. And I have it connected to a drill, so we can uh, turn this encoder to determine the RPM. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure our, mem our, our high speed input timer setup using the Do More Designer PLC uh, software. So let's just uh, we'll close off our specifications and we'll go to our Do More Designer. And the first thing we will do, let's move that over, is we will call up the system configuration. We can call it up by using the, calling up by system configuration under the project browser, or we can use the default icon over here, or we can go PLC, and then system configuration. Either way, it gets you to the same location. Then what we want to do is call up the BRICS local I.O. Local, located right here. And as I move my cursor over, you can see I can call up my high-speed I.O. here, or I can use my high-speed counter I.O. here. Once we do, what you'll notice is that we had function one that we programmed before, and now function two, which is going to be my high-speed edge timer, we'll program it. Going into the edge timer, what you'll see is that we have our um, device name. Now this is device name that'll start up uh, and give you all the parameters. And it defaults to the high speed input one, but here it will list all of the available inputs that I have for this PLC. Then I have my edge timer here. I can also have a dual edge timer. And when I do, you see I have a second one come in. We're going to use just the one and then the edge one input that will be on the leading edge. As you see here, I can also go on the leading and trailing edge. 
I can go on the leading edge or trailing edge and leading edge, or I can go on the trailing edge to trailing edge. So we're going to go on leading edge to leading edge. We're also going to do the enable uh, free run. What that will do is automatically reset our time each time that we run. So I don't have to manually do it. So it should give us a value right away. And then we're going to also enable the time output. Now the time output I have labeled is 100,000 microseconds or be 100 milliseconds. So every 100 milliseconds, if it does not see a pulse, it will actually reset that timer. Yes. Then what we're going to do is enable our scaling value and our timed units will be 1024, which is the pulses per rev on our incremental encoder. Then we'll have our unit base time of minutes. So we're going to have revolutions per minute on here. Our scale offset, this will be an offset value that we can add to it if we want. Right now we're going to leave it at zero. So we would just want the RPM directly. Then we have calculated op options that can calculate over time what that value is going to be. So it's the average over time. So we can put so many seconds if we wanted it to do it that way. That way it'll slow down that output being updated. So once we have that, we'll just uh, cancel all that. And what you'll see is again, function two is right there. Is it okay? And now going back to here, we can look at our filters. And on our filters, you see that my high speed input zero is actually coming at 250,000 Hertz or 250,000 times a second. So we just got to make sure that's not too slow. So right now that's the quickest that this uh, PLC will handle. So let's hit cancel that. So once we have that done, then what we can do is take a look at our um, heat file or our structure for our high speed counter timer too. So if we look under configuration, memory, IO, and then specialty, you will see that under uh, timer two here, we actually have our variables right here. So time started, time complete, time out. We have an enable timer. Then we have our accumulated value, our last time, our, our scaled value, which should show us our RPM. And then we have our filter time constant. So there are our parameters. So let's just move that over here and let's take a look at the actual program itself. So we're gonna keep the existing program that we had prior and we're going to add rung number three here. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable our timer two, high speed counter timer two. And then we're going to compare our scaled value from timer one to our scaled value timer two. So when they're both off, like it is right now, you can see that I have Y2 output on. Then when I start going, it'll give me RPM on both of these. Now, because the counts is not as accurate as what the time is that we just done. What you'll find is that we get more accuracy with our time base rate for our rate. And that's what we can do is now let's just look at our um, data view. And we will open up our data view. There we go. And you can see here that we have our enable timer on and our scaled value and our scaled value right here shows us our rate. So let's uh, take our drill here and we can start giving it some pulses. And you can see our rate here, scaled value is about 12. And here it's about same round 12, 13. As I increase it, you will see that I can actually go up and we can go up to say 230, but it's jumping around quite a bit. Over here, it's not jumping around nearly as much. And again, we can put that average in and we can see that we actually are getting very good values when we're looking at a time base rate over our scaled counter rate. So we can just stop that and what you'll see is our program just finishes up. So very simple to implement this time base rate high speed input. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or bus data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. And remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.